Hello everyone um, and welcome to day five of the Virtual Island Summit 2023 and thank you so much for joining this session. Uh, my name is Vincent Deringer and I am the PR and editorial lead here at Island Innovation and I'm uh, based in the Netherlands in The Hague. I'm very happy to be co-presenting this Island Story session today and uh, it's titled How the Island Games Created an International Sporting Family and uh, in this session we're going to be discussing the power that the International Island Games has and how it fosters a sense of inclusivity and achievement while enhancing collaboration and island pride. Now, before we begin, um, you should see a poll that is gonna be appearing on your screen shortly. And uh, just to uh, let us know where you're connecting from and the sector and industry you belong to. And uh, you know, whilst you're filling that out as well, I uh, invite you to use a chat function. Please introduce yourself, you know, talk to the other attendees and tell us where you're joining from and make any comments you want during the session as well. We also have a QA. and a uh, If you want to be able to uh, ask any questions, you can add that through there and we'll try and get to as many of your questions as possible. All right. So whilst we wait for those uh, that, that poll to come up and uh, those answers to come in, uh, I'll uh, very happy to uh, to also introduce uh, Johan Pedersen, who is the chairman of the International Island Games Association, and uh, who will be speaking to us um, today. Now let's just see. The poll should be up now, so if you want to let us know where you're all coming from. Oh, that's nice. I'm seeing quite a lot of activity in the chat already, so. Hello, Gavlin from St. Lucia. Hello, Bob from Shetland. We've got greetings from Oslo as well. Fantastic. And Linda in St. Martin. Oh, we got Orkney as well. Hello, Kirsty. Now, where are we all from? So we're connecting today. You should be able to see the results as well. We've uh, got almost half of us are in Europe and the rest in the Caribbean, Africa, uh, North America, and the Pacific. So we've got quite a quite a good split here uh, today. So thank you for being here. And uh, in terms of sectors, most of us are in the private sector, uh, but we've still got some representation from academia and NGOs. That's, uh, that's fantastic. Uh, and in terms of industries, a lot of events management, Fantastic as well. Communications, uh, energy, environmental services, politics. Okay, great. We've got a we've got a really good um, mix here. So I'm really excited, uh, and uh, hope you're also very excited to hear our uh, our incoming presentation. Uh, Johan, I'll uh, I'll let you introduce yourself, um, and I believe you have a presentation as well uh, that you'd like to share with us. Thank you, Vincent. It's a pleasure to see you all, not uh, literally, but still. It's great to speak about something that is very warm in my and many others' hearts. My name is Jörgen Pettersson, and I am based in the Åland Island, which is an autonomy in between Finland and Sweden. Celebrated 100 years of self-governance uh, last year. We do belong to Finland, but we speak Swedish and we have our own parliament and government uh, making our own laws. But it's not all on that we're here to discuss today. It's the Island Games, which is a phenom phenomenon, it's fair to say, started back in 1985 in uh, Isle of Man. I'll share my screen with you and hope that you all are able to see it right now. Yep. Can you? It's very strange to sit here and talk to yourself. Can you see the presentation now? Uh, yes, but I think you're in presentation mode, so we can also see your uh, your notes. I think. What does that mean? Does it? Yeah. Uh, what would be the not present? Yes. To... So you uh, can press F five on your keyboard. Uh, I have a Mac. Oh, all right. So go to the lower I did right. try a five now. Is it better now? It's still the same. Would you mind stopping sharing and, and, and trying it again? Is that better that's now? It. That's perfect, yeah. Okay. So you can see the presentation now. Yeah. Excellent. 
We are the Island Games, the International Island Games Association. I'm the chair of the association, which is uh, uh, based in Isle of Man, have been so ever since the very first games back in 1985. We're dealing with 24 islands who are our member islands. We are having 18 sports and during six days every second year, we gather to compete. We bring islands together. The Island Games is happening every two years with uh, thousands of athletes from all across the globe. We are presently and sometimes larger than the Winter Olympics, in fact. Uh, the competitors gather in order to swim, shoot, sprint and do all they can in order to win the medals. There are target and endurance and even football, basketball and volleyball and much more. We do, uh, of course, welcome spectators in, in that when the islands, the host islands have uh, capacity to, to do so. It's very challenging for an island of mostly small scale to be the host of the games today, gathering up to 3000 competitors for a week. We are in fact dealing with uh, up to 14 different international sports in six days. For example, we are almost as large as the World Cup used to be with 16 teams, but we deal with it in six days only. All our member islands together uh, represents uh, roughly a million islanders who are involved in this. Why we do this? Because we are small communities. We do struggle to find international competition in our countries all over the world. We are surrounded and shaped by the sea, which also uh, connects us and makes us uh, islanders. What is islanders? In Holland, when we celebrated our 100 years of uh, self-governance, we described ourselves as full of willfulness, maybe a touch of stubbornness, which you have to be in order to make your life in, in islands. That is also what gives our competitors the will and the determination to, to do try to train hard, defy the odds and reach for the gold, because we are the friendly games, but we still compete for the medals. The, Games started in 1985 as the Mini Olympics. It was, a, it was an initiative from the government of the Isle of Man in order to contribute for the welfare of the youth, which at that time were considered to do worse things than sports. They sort of lacked the sporting infrastructure within their island and they were prepared to invest heavily in sport and in, in social welfare. They therefore invited six, 700 sportsmen and women from 15 different islands who all came to Douglas in Isle of Man. I was, by the way, one of them. I played volleyball at that time. We did play on concrete floor. And since then, loads of things has happened. Today, most of our islands, all the 24 of them, are having invested quite heavily in sporting venues and in sporting infrastructure. Our competitors come from Faroe Islands and Scandinavia up in the Northern Hemisphere. There are quite a few from the British Isles, from the Mediterranean and as uh, far away as from St. Helena and Falkland Islands. And they're all competed during eight different sports at that time in 1985. And when the, the tournament was over at the end of the week, they were all very convinced that this is too good not to continue. And therefore, at that time, it was decided to, to, to hold the, the following games, the second one in Guernsey, 1987. All was very basic at that time. During the following 12 years, the Games traveled to first the Faroe Islands from Guernsey to Åland Islands, my home island, to the Isle of Wight, Gibraltar and Jersey. And the numbers of competitors reached 2000 at that time. 
the enthusiasm for the games grew and the event became more and more important to the island's sporting communities and also in the political lives of the islands because apart from the sports people getting to know each other also the political impact became clearer for every games that uh, happened uh, and the possibility to represent your home island was also a strong motivator for all these young athletes to train hard and become a little bit better. When this happened, the island's governments realized the positive impact sport could have on a small community, promoting a healthy lifestyle, a focus for young people, and also strengthening the nation's cultural identity. There are very few things in life that uh, can uh, com be compared with the feeling of representing your island, maybe winning a medal and listening to your own anthem standing there at the podium. Our member islands today are from all over the world. Åland, it's Alderney in the British uh, Channel, the Bermuda, Cayman Islands, Falkland Islands, Faroe Islands, Freya in Norway, Gibraltar, Gotland, Gozo, uh, our newest member from the island of Malta, Greenland, Guernsey, Hitra, also in Norway, Isle of Man, Isle of Wight, Jersey, Menorca, Orkney, Sarema, Sark, Shetland, St. Helena, Western Isles, and Unismon, also known as Anglesey in Wales. Our sports are the same that you regularly find in the Olympics. We, can, we have a list of 18 approved sports from which a host island can choose between 12 and 14, not to make it necessary to be grand and large in order to accommodate all these people. We compete in archery, in athletics, in badminton, in basketball, in bowls and 10-pin bowling by all means, cycling, football, golf, gymnastics, judo, sailing, shooting, squash, swimming, table tennis, tennis, triathlon, and volleyball. All our previous games so far, we did have our uh, 19th games in Guernsey last summer, and I will come back to that one. We started in Isle of Man, we went further to Guernsey, we went to Faroe Islands, to the Orland Islands, to Isle of Wight, Gibraltar, Jersey, Gotland, Isle of Man, Guernsey, Shetland, Rhodes, Orland back again, Isle of Wight, Bermuda, Jersey, Gotland, and Gibraltar again. And the, this very summer, we had a huge success in Guernsey 2023. We had to postpone one game during the pandemic, where we clearly struggled to see the future within the games. We decided at the, the spring of 2020, you remember when the pandemic just had hit us and we all struggled to understand the full impact it would have on the world and on the sporting communities. It was therefore decided to not go for a prolonging till 2022, but for a full year, full four years terms. Meaning that we saw all our friends in Guernsey last summer, where there were up till for sure 3,000 uh, that came into Guernsey to celebrate the games, the comeback of the games. I strongly recommend you to have a look at the website from the Guernsey, the NatWest International Island Games in Guernsey 2023. It's uh, guernsey2023.gg. These are the volunteers needed. Not only were there thousands and thousands of competitors and officials and spectators, in order to take care of all these guests to your island, Guernsey had a thousand of volunteers uh, doing honorary work in order to make their islands as welcoming as possible. And they surely did succeed with that. Another thing that I would like to to mention is that the BBC made a, a very well, a very nice uh, documentary called One Sporting Family, which is on the BBC iPlayer and can be seen for 17 more days, actually. So there is no time to waste. I strongly recommend it because it gives a feeling of what we're doing and why we're doing it and 
who are competing. Amongst all these competitors we've had over the years, we think it's nice to see that we have role models that has reached much further than only to our games. We did when we start, we were inspired by the Commonwealth Games to some extent. We have ever since changed our constitution so it's more tailor-made for island communities. But amongst these uh, competitors that has taken part in our games, we have Mark Cavendish, for example, the cyclist from Isle of Man, who actually 20 years ago in Guernsey did one of his first appearances on the international scene. We have Kelly Southerton in Hepathlon and 400 meters from Isle of Wight, Matthias Sunneborn, who was the long jumps long jump star and 200 meter runner from Gotland Sidonia Mothersill from Cayman Island a 200 meter sprinter Paul Joensen a world swimmer from the Faroe Islands all these are previous gold medal winners at the Nat NatWest International Island Games and they went on to become elite international champions and competitors in the Olympics we do not highlight these stars during our games because we genuinely think that all are as important. But having said that, it's good to have these beacons of excellency as a showcase for talented young islanders to be inspired of and to follow in their footsteps and begin their own tough and thrilling journey towards uh, sporting excellency. I must mention this young uh, young man from from the from Guernsey, Alistair Chal Chal Chalmers, who made history for Guernsey with the first ever medal at the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham 2022. Yes, he won gold in Guernsey in 400 meters this very summer as well. Why do we do this? It's nice to quote, for example, Sidoni Mothersill who says, I'm extremely proud to have been part of the NatWest Island Games, which is an important event for the Cayman Islands. I thoroughly enjoyed the experience. Matthias Sunneborn, the NatWest International Island Games has always been a natural source of inspiration in my Olympic career. And that's what we do as islanders. We come from small circumstances, but we do aim for excellency. We have great ambitions, although that we are small. And it's uh, important to remember what it means to living on an island where the sea divides us, but more to, to more extent unites us. We are born and grew up in islands with the sea constantly around us that has molded us islanders so that we have a lot in common. But we also come from various parts of the world and that gives us our cultural differences, which is something we underline in the International Island Games Association. We are different, but as a matter of fact, we tend to say the same things, although we speak different languages. And we also praise the ancient history that we have been brought to by generations and to preserve our culture and belonging to a place at the same time as we develop it and see what we can learn from others. The IIJ, the International uh, Committee, is all honorary members. Myself, I'm from the Orland Islands. James Johnston is the vice chair from Shetland. We have our treasurer, Steve Camp from Jersey. We do have our members from Sarema, belonging to Estonia, Anovares. We have uh, Andrew Ingster, who also is a member from the Shetland Isle, Islands. And we have Jenny Valin Sander, who is a member from Gotland. And to support us in our daily decision making, we have two honorary advisors. One legal advisor, Olli Helfrich from the Isle of Man, <clears throat> and uh, Dr. Frank Vaughan, who is an honorary medical advisor, also from the Isle of Man, as is our general secretary and our uh, headquarter. It's based in Isle of Man. Uh, Andy Varnum knows more about the games than anyone else alive. NatWest International, you might wonder why we call it. We have ever since 1999 been sponsored and having a partnership with the NatWest International, which has brought us the financial uh, security in order to continue to develop our games 
it has also inspired us to establish a more professional organization. And we do think that they have learned quite a lot from us as well when it comes to dealing with people. The NatWest International and ourselves as the IIGA, we have during 25 years worked together and the NatWest International, it was their longest standing sponsorship ever. Uh, it, uh, they, it took an end in Guernsey this summer, uh, not because uh, they didn't want it to continue, but because there always an end of things. And the end became, uh, it did happen in, in Guernsey last summer. So for the moment, the IIJ and Orkney, who is our next host island, are looking for new title sponsors in order to continue to develop our games and our ideas. From the NatWest, uh, Olli Holbrock, their chief executive, said uh, during the in, uh, link to this, uh, uh, so to say, when we get uh, to different uh, ways, quoting, we are immensely proud of our 25 year association with the International Island Games Association and the legacy that it has given to both the athletes and to all Islanders. Hosting the games is a huge feat that brings real challenge for the host island, but the effect it can have has often been transformative in terms of sports infrastructure and achievement, as well as building island confidence and connectivity. It has been a pleasure to work with the IIJ and the many host islands since our first games as headline sponsors in 1999, delivering such tremendous results for everyone. During the games in Guernsey, there were all, also a, a tier two sponsors, PWC, the states of Guernsey, Jackson, Specsavers, Praxis, Pula, Randalls, the Red Carnation, Ravenscroft, Sandpiper, Atmost Shore. This is to underline the importance of everyone working together. It's never enough just to have interested sports people or a genuine community support. You also need to have financial backup. And we like to think that all these sponsors that has made all every games possible have gained tremendously from their uh, taking part of it. By becoming a, a sponsor of the, the, for the title and the, the games, it brings, it comes with the, different title rights highlights, such as uh, broadcast streaming, extensive branding across venues and all sort of things. I don't need to go into to details in this, just mentioning that it's something that everyone can gain from. Our next games will take place in Orkney in Scotland. I saw Kirsty here. It's glad to see you here, Kirsty. She's the games director of these games that will take place between the 12th and 18th of July, 2025. It's, the, it's 40 years since we started, which is very difficult to believe when you've been a part of it for so long. And please have a look at their website, orkney2025.com in order to learn more from this. It's safe for, it's also important to state here that Orkney has a great support from both Event Scotland and Sport Scotland naturally also from the Orkney Islands Council, Council part from uh, other sponsorships in order to make this happen. After Orkney, we're looking forward to go to the Inismon for their first time. It's also the first time that Orkney will become a host islands. And after Inismon in 2029, we continue to Isle of Man back to the birthplace again. And in 2031, we're looking to go to Faroe Islands, who are all these are, are a result of significant investment from regional and national governments by the reasons I explained earlier that the, there are a lot of upsides from investing in a games and the benefits have always been much larger than the costs. The legacy for having for being a host island are several. The creation of new sporting venues, upgrading of existing ones, gives the potential for post-games community and special events use. That we have seen very clearly in, for example, Gibraltar, who was the host for 2019. 
Uh, we have seen uh, the creation and modernization of the tourism infrastructure, links in with hotels, airport, roads, and so on. The representation of host island and its culture and enhancing the host island's international image and demonstrates the ability to deliver major events on the world state. We see the presence of international media increasing for each and every games, the involvement of the community as the 1000 volunteers in Guernsey, the development of skills and knowledge to hand large organizations of the locals, the economic benefit from the games, increased tourism and business activity apart from the uh, global awareness, and to use the games to encourage a better understanding and appreciation of the rich heritage and culture of our member islands and developing the host islands international links, the pride, the lifelong memories and feel good factor for the local populations. And these links in then the opportunity for sponsors where there are there is a unique and prestigious opportunity to take over from that West for the present. And having uh, uh, the 2025 Orkney Island game celebrates 40 anniversary will even more underline the need and the beauty of the games. They will all, all have the opportunity to imprint their distinct philosophy, creating a lasting international impact on island lives and on their brands. These are different sponsorship structure. I don't need to go into them, but it's always a struggle. It has to be said to find the financial uh, strength to be the host of the island. It will comes with a lot of gains, but it also will come with some investments, such as broadcast streaming, which has been, uh, been increasing the awareness of the games all over the world. And we have seen a strong, strong increase in how people do follow our games and follow everything that happens during the games. And I now would like to finish off with a quick look of how it can be seen during our games. This is a, a movie that is made by the channel television. <laughs> million islanders follow the island games. You will make a difference. Small places with huge ambitions. Competitors from the Pharaohs to the Falklands. Live international sport on your doorstep. They're known as the friendly games, but the competition is this. memories and legacies for future generations, bringing islands together. So that was a lot of information in 30 minutes. I'm uh, glad for the opportunity to introduce you to the Island Games. And I hope to see you in Orkney uh, in uh, 2025. And I also here to answer questions uh, uh, if there should be any. Thanks for listening and hope that I have stick to the timetable more or less. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much, Johan. That was a very nice presentation, and I'm certainly now a lot more keen to to watch the Island Games. So thank you very much for um, for highlighting that for us. Uh, I know we have a few questions here in the in the chat that I'll uh, read back out to you. 
Um, the first from Luke, uh, who wanted to know how does an island qualify and the criteria to participate within um, the island games. Uh, to to become a member of our uh, association, you need to be an island. You cannot be more than 220,000 uh, inhabitants. You need to have some sort of uh, autonomy, so to say. Uh, you need to have a sporting structure <clears throat> and uh, you need to also be uh, able to travel to the different uh, competitions that are that we are are hosting should you also be an island that could be a potential host islands it would be even stronger the case however having said that we are for the moment 24 member islands and our constitution only allows 25 we put that limit there because we cannot grow too much it wouldn't be possible to host the games then and for the moment, we are in the position that it's um, it's give or take every time for four different host islands to have the capacity when it comes to, for example, accommodation and also the travel infrastructure is uh, is very challenging. Uh, for anyone who lives on one of our member islands, you have to be either born there in order to compete or you have to have lived there at least a year before every games. So we do have some sort of criteria uh, in order to compete. No, that's fantastic. Okay, yeah, I, I know that kind of answers some of uh, one of the, part of the other question here by by Sven. But as uh, we'll, we'll start wrapping up after this, but um, just as a, a final question uh, based off of Sven's uh, input here in the Q and A, wh what do you see? Uh, how do you see the IIG? developing uh, going forward and you know what, what is your hope for the future uh, for the island games to continue to bring excellence we are larger today than we were when we started in 1985 uh, but even more important is that all the islands have developed tremendously out from the games in sporting excellency in organizational skills in cooperation in between the islands and they've also learned that that you're you're never alone although you are an island you share your challenges with many others not only in sport but also in community building so we see for example an increasing interest for every games amongst senior politicians and leaders coming to our games not only to watch their competitors compete but also to take the opportunity to meet up with other senior politicians from other islands in order to uh, to share challenges and see what you can do and to find opportunities so our role is to become to be a, an even stronger platform for this to happen and to make sure that the different host islands deliver what the rest of the member islands expect them to no, that's fantastic. Thank you very much, uh, Jorgen. That kind of sounds like the sports version of the Virtual Island Summit. So uh, definitely all for it. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to thank you again so, so much for this uh, fantastic presentation. Um, and I'll, uh, I'll direct everyone to go and uh, look up and read more about the International Island Games. I know I will, that's for sure. Um, and um, yeah, if as we're wrapping up, I also want to remind um, everyone that if you, in case you missed it during our opening session, we announced uh, quite uh, quite the announcement in terms of we are partnering with the government of Prince Edward Island in Canada to host the ever global sustainable island summit in the country. So it's going to be a two day in person summit in May 2024, and uh, we're going to be discussing solutions and advancements in sustainable energy. So uh, you can follow the link in the chat uh, for more information and use this special discount code just for uh, this week. Uh, which is VIS 2023. So that's all one word and capitalized VIS 2023. And you can get a very early bird discount. So again, that's valid until the uh, the end of this week. But um, thanks again, Johan, and thanks everyone for, for participating today. This has been a uh, fantastic session. Uh, yeah, and I hope to, to, to see more about the IIG in the future. Thank you very much. And it's 17 days to go to watch the iPlayer on BBC. Please have a look. I shared the link in the comments. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.